YouTube, what's up? This is the big face trucker coming at you, making a video, 12 o'clock at night. What time is it? Is it 12? 1 o'clock at night. See, I'm in the truck, right? I've been running. What will I make this video about? I don't know. But, uh, I just figured I'd make a video, check in and shit, see what everybody's doing. Hope everybody's doing fine. Shout outs to the people that went over there to the place to get their DOT done. I know what happened. Congratulations. You know, hats off to the lady truckers out there. <clears throat> doing that thing. You see, I got the crown on. Chilling. Uh, down here, at, I'm parked at a Walmart. Buying Applebee's. Just, just got finished eating Applebee's. You know. Got to eat something good. Got to eat healthy out here. So, I had to get some vegetables, some salad in. You know. And uh, that's about it, you know. But a couple of things that, you know, that's been going on out here since I've been running. And uh, dealing with some of these low boards. I'm dealing with Convoy. And Convoy has been taking care of me. Uh, I got 100% on time. You know, it's like, <clears throat> they give me loads that I bid on. When I bid on them, I see other guys bidding on these loads. And they bid load. For some reason, Convoy picks me to take the load. So I'm taking this load from, where was I? Kennesaw. And I'm taking it up to Pennsylvania. Drop this load in Pennsylvania. I don't have a load yet from Pennsylvania. I'm thinking about coming back down, <clears throat> uh, doing some long runs right now. You know, some revenue runs. Revenue, revenue. That's what we need out here. Rates are crap, and. I'm glad all that impeachment stuff is all over with so things can start rolling back again. You know, uh, hopefully things will go for a change too. But uh, quite a bit, you know. And on convoy, Convoy's de detention is totally different from Uber. All right, you got to fight Uber for your detention. Convoy is like, they see that you arrived there, which is real time. And how long when you leave, work the app. They send you a Raycon right after you leave with the detention on it. That's what I'm talking about. All right? So now, these shippers got to move. They got to they gotta load you when they're dealing with convoy. Because if they don't, they're going to pay for the time. So it's, this is the second convoy load that I got detention straight off the back without even calling nobody or nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying? And, and when I bid on these loads, they're already a good rate. And then you get that extra $100 or whatever, you know, whatever time you've been there. And then it boosts, boosts the load up again. So, hey. Loving it. So I bid on a lot of convoy loads. Um, also, J.B. Hunt 
it's not as good as Convoy, so you got to actually call J.B. Hunt to get your damn attention. So, you know, it's what it is. People don't want to pay for the right time, you know. And when you have the right time, whether it's the app or whether it's on the bills, they still do it the right way. That's 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 incredible. That's nice. That's nice. I hope you know drivers don't go down the line and start abusing it. You know, let's just keep it right. That's the way it needs to be. And for these brokers to say that they can't send a Raycon right away. brokers that can't send the Raycon right away. Uh, that's, uh, you know, that's a catch right there because when you in and drop the load, they don't pay. Make a list of the brokers that don't pay you. Try not, I mean, try not to deal with them, you know. Don't deal with them. If they don't want to pay you, why would you do business with a person that don't want to pay you? I got a list of brokers. All right. I got a list of brokers that I don't pull loads for. And I could be in a bad spot. All right. And I will move on to the next, to the next spot or either uh, find another broker. It might be a bad decision. It might be a good decision. But to me, nah. You can't pay me. That means you ain't worth working with. And that's how it is. You know, because I'm the one that's doing the sacrifice. You know drivers is doing the sacrifice out here. These guys go home 5 o'clock every day. You know, and, and come into work fast and then you know big company is charging you know that gives them commission or whatever so you know they get some loads up they make a good commission they all and some some brokers probably don't make a good, good you know commission but hey that's who they work for and how they represent that's a, that's all it is you know what I'm saying yeah and it's just a messed up situation for the truckers out here, the drivers out here that's actually in the truck, spending the night in the truck, away from the family, away from the home. And don't get it twisted. You got to run to make money. All right? That's, that's plain and simple. You got to run to make money. Uh, you ain't got to run crazy. Just run smart. I'm doing so-so. I ain't gonna say I'm making a whole lot of money because rates are messed up, but I'm not gonna run all the way to Texas and back over to New York and from New York going down to Miami. I'm not gonna do that. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. That's just crazy. Do it the smart way. If you want to make crazy money, yeah, you probably can't do that. A couple of guys I know that run like that, they're making money. You make money to maintain your business, maintain your home. Until things get better, until you start eliminating some of the, some of the expenses, then you start seeing, start, start seeing a bigger profit. Before I got in this trucking game, I didn't know and never know that it was going to be like this on the owner-operated independent game. You know, uh, never, never thought it'd be like this, but it it can get stressful. It's the very it gets stressful out here. I'm serious. You can actually sit 
all day and call six, I say 20 to 30 phone calls before you even get a load. All right. Um, in certain spots. Because you could be in the bread basket is up there in the Illinois area around in there and you could just say yeah they, they post the rate they know it's a good rate they know you're gonna go for it you can call and try to get more money that's up to you or you could just grab it and go grab it and go instead of standing still I tried to grab it and go it doesn't work out for me. Maybe it works out for other dudes. You know what I mean? Um, it's been interesting running running out here on your own. It's, 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 it is what it is. Alright? home time you could be home as long as you want but you're not going to be making no money alright and if you if you go out you run a load run two loads and your dead head is 200 100 miles <clears throat> you're sitting or whatever, you really better know your numbers and find out whether you're just breaking even or you just making money. Uh, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I'm in my fifth year and uh, this is something that I, I, I can't see myself doing 20 years, <clears throat> 15 years. I can't see myself doing. And you know, things could change down the line. You know, uh, I'm still working on trying to get uh, a, a shipper instead of a broker. You know what I'm saying? I'm still trying to work on that. And, it, and it's hard because, you know, I went, did one day, I did one day knocking on shippers doors and everybody's all locked up with a broker or whatever and that's it's the game they already know the game is like that unless you find that shipper that's just tired of the broker beating them all right you got a carrier that's tired of the broker beating them and then you hey you hook up with a shipper and if you want a shipper that's gonna keep you keep you rolling you know, and you don't even gotta keep rolling. Just give you a good load going out your city, and then you use the load board to go back to your city. You know, or you run around and then you go back, and then you hit the hit the, hit the shipper up and see what he's got, or if he's got anything. I really thought that I had a good connect with running tires, but. Uh, that didn't pan out to nothing. And you know, when it doesn't pan out to nothing, it's either you just give up or either you keep going by and you keep talking to the same person. You know, I thought I had a connect running down to uh, Florida. That didn't pan out. brokers know but there's that one guy that's out there that's got a nice hook he's not messing with a broker got a nice hook broker pays him right after the load that's what we want That's what we want. We 
Yeah. Get ready to turn it in. Everything is everything. The car's still missing, so it is what it is. As long as I got gap insurance on it, I'm straight. But it was a nice car. That's all I can say. Nice car in the wrong hands. It's not a good thing. <laughs> but yeah, I figured I'd just make this 15 minute, 20 minute video just to check in uh, I would try to keep making more videos uh, videos is not my thing really it's not it's just this this YouTube channel is just my journey you know and I come across some good stuff to talk about and make points about you know uh, the guy sent me some information about oil changes on your truck and conventional oil and synthetic full synthetic I've been running full synthetic in my truck I don't do all those PMs that everybody do I don't do that all right uh it's a money game. It's a it's a catch. It's a money. They tell you, you got to do it, but all it is is taking more money, taking more money from the driver. These engines are built. They're built perfection to pull weight and everything. All right. So a guy told me that he talked to a mechanic my buddy Jim said he talked to a mechanic and the mechanic says he's very seldom sees an engine blow because of the oil alright your oil is going to get black once you start it up there's nothing you could do about that it's diesel nothing you could do about that so if you run full synthetic that's where on the engine you can actually I was thinking about just replacing filters that's it replace the filters and keep it moving do it yourself when you're on the side you try to do as much stuff yourself you save yourself a tons of money and lots of time. You know, I keep an eye on my oil level and my oil oil pressure. That's it. And if your oil level goes down, your pressure is gonna go down. That's it. You know your truck better than anybody else. This food is not agreeing with me. So, but that's about it. You know, I'm just on a run. I don't think I'm going home for another another two weeks. Out here trying to get in. Uh trying to make some things happen and that's about it but look I'm about to get some rest I hope everybody's out there safe like I said it's 20 minutes hope everybody's safe I'm just checking in saying what's up uh, it is what it is kind of tight but y'all Y'all hold it down. Tomorrow's Sunday. Uh, hopefully, I, well, Sunday night, I'll be in Pennsylvania. Ready to drop this load first thing in the morning and do some running around.
I don't know. I, I'm thinking about just getting out of Pennsylvania. I'm reading up on some stuff. Pennsylvania uh, DOTs are cracking down on a lot of crack uh, crap. You know, uh, there's a lot of dudes that I know that like to sleep on the side of the road. And that's illegal in Pennsylvania. So they will get you. And it, it, it's funny because it's, it's the way it is. You can't, there's no parking in Pennsylvania. No parking. You basically have to find a spot and hide and hope and hope you have a good sleep for the night and go go from there and these DOT officers know that hey there's no parking but it is dangerous to me it's dangerous I never parked on the side of the road you set yourself up for a lot of things that happen to you you know, uh, you want to limit that. You want to get off the side of the road. You set yourself up for robbery. You set yourself up for somebody to hit you in the back while you're in the wrong. You know, you set yourself up for a lot of things to happen to you on the, only on just some shit that I'm tired and I'm going to sleep. You can wake up in the morning and it'd be a whole different thing going on. But I figured I'd just ramble on. I'll call this the rambler <laughs> video. Uh, I figured I'd just make one. You know what I mean? Somebody said they want me to make more videos. I will try, but I tell you. Uh, it's hard to make a video and I don't want to be making a video just to be babbling on like this one. You know what I mean? Uh, trucking can get boring. <laughs> it can get boring. So, you know, there's not a whole lot. And for these people that be reaching for stuff out here, to talk about about trucking and then they go from trucking to something else uh, it's a million things yeah you, they're looking for content and stuff like that it's a lot of things but <laughs> somebody already did a video on it or whatever you gonna redo it and hopefully your video is better than theirs or something like that and now you got YouTubers out there that's doing videos on other things other than trucking you know um, the best thing that I ever had was when I first started was to be able to get on YouTube and get a good clear thought about what trucking is all about what I gotta go up against um, from from going to trucking school to taking tests to be in training and all that YouTube is good for that but once you get out of that and you go sign up to a company and you are still watching YouTube you can get unfocused because cats will say your company is no good and your company might be a good fit for you, you know, or, and then you go somewhere else where somebody else is at and it's not a good fit for you, you know. It's been plenty of times YouTubers, re, you know, I reached out to YouTubers and they told me, oh, go to KLLM, oh, go to Snyder, oh, go over to PTL, oh, go to Maverick. Oh, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, I'm like, nah. I'm going to make my decision myself. I'm going to do my due diligence and check it. Check out these places where I'm about to go or whatever. And I wind up going to Maverick Transportation. 
because it seemed like it was going to be a good fit for me. But what I realized, flat betting, it was for uh, flat betting for a company for for a company. You don't get all your money. And flat betting, you can make a lot of money tarping and all that other stuff. It's good money in that. But it's a young man's game to me. All right. I'm not going to get out there and climb on top of a trailer and tarp and all that other stuff. I'm not going to do that, you know. And some of these places have the tarping machine that will help you do all of that and everything. But in, like, frigid weather and stuff like that, or it could be hot out, you know, or whatever. It could be raining and stuff, you know, and you got to get out there and cover the product. And you got to ask yourself, is that something that you want to do? You know what I'm saying? Is it worth the money? You know what I mean? Is it worth you getting out there? Is it worth falling from the top of the damn product all the way down to the ground? Or is it worth you jumping off the, off the deck and blowing out your knee? You know, stuff like that happens, yo. And... Let me tell you, it's like I said, it's a young man's game. They they heal, heal up. You get an older dude out there, and he's jumping and, and doing all of that, and he throws his leg out. He ain't going to heal up like he's supposed to heal up, like one of the young dudes, you know? So, you know, and then you got the reefer. You know, my opinion on reefer is like you got to have patience in that game. Those guys sit for hours, six, seven hours. And it, it, it's really incredible because the shippers, they don't give a damn. Let them sit out there. That's why I guess Reefer pays more. You know, how much more? Not too much more. Not too much more. You know what I'm saying? You get a dry van and all you got to do is walk in there with a piece of paper and walk back out, get in your truck, and let them unload you. They in dry van catch the same problem of them taking their time unloading you or whatever. That's why you know you gotta have the right brokers on this side. If you working for a company, you gotta live with it. Let me tell you, when a company tells you you gotta wait six hours before you get detention. You're going to be there six hours. The, the shipper, I mean, the receivers know six hours. We got six hours with you. And on duty day. And then after six hours, you going to get what? How much? $30 an hour or something, maybe. I don't know. Guess who's getting that in between time, that two hour time to the time you start getting money? All right. Trust me. It's different on the side. Totally different. You know. Some of you cats don't hear about. I didn't even hear about detention until. Until I went to Snyder. Because when I was with Silvercom. 99% uh, hazmat company. Uh. I never, I never realized, I never even waited at a place. It was in and out, you know. So I didn't hear nothing about no detention or sitting or whatever. So I know that's just certain areas and certain companies that have to go through that. And now that, you know, I'm on this side on my own, you know, it's all in the place that you pick. I haven't moved the Walmart load in probably a year. I haven't did did a Walmart load in a probably a year because I don't do Walmart. It's a trickery. You get there an hour early. All right. It takes about 20, 30, 20 to 30 minutes before you even get a dock and back up. All right? 
So they want you to back up, disconnect, drive your bobtail down to the office. You back that up. That's another five, ten minutes, right? And if you ain't dead at that time and you get up in that office and you got to wait because there's another couple of drivers before you, you lose your detention time. So they won't let you two hours early. Or some will. So I don't even I don't even do Walmart. I don't even do Sam's. I don't even do I did the Dollar General. I might do a Dollar General down in Florida. I know how they get down. But anywhere else, nah. It's the first thing I ask the broker. Who's the customer? Where am I taking this to? It's one thing getting loaded, but getting unloaded? When you ready to, you there, you know, you already there, you drove hard and everything, you're there, and they, te <coughs> they tell you, we can't unload you today, tomorrow. Now you got to fight with the broker. Hey, broker, send me another rate time with my layover pay in it. Oh, we're going to send it when you when you get unloaded. You see what I'm saying? You see how that works? Then when you get unloaded, you think you're going to get your old layover pay? And if you do get your layover pay, it's going to be like $75, $100, It's about it's the standard, but is that is it worth it? You know what I'm saying? Your truck's supposed to turn over five hundred dollars a day. Alright? Minimum five hundred dollars a day. And if you gotta pay for your equipment, you need to be like six and eight, somewhere around up in there a day. So nah. Check your customers. Check all of that. I won't do it. So I find these like I find these like mom and pop spots where I unload not a whole lot of trucks truck uh you know truck truck traffic and you get you in and, and they get you out of there in the in the minimum time which is an hour the most two hours or whatever but convoy sends me to these mom and pops and these guys they ain't got it together so i'll sit and wait i'm patient that's sleep time for me you know what i'm saying the sleep time but look i'm gonna get off here 33 minutes i'm gonna holler at your big face trucker come signing off you know what it is speak from the heart right with the left peace